go. Are you ready to rock and roll and tackle some crazy series questions? We are certainly in the middle of the jungle here with regards to sequences and series. Um, what I've done is I've given you three examples already on the screen, and, and uh, boy, do they look scary at first glance. Basically, what we're going to say is we're going to say that two out of the three are equivalent. And I'm going to ask you to try to figure out which two are equivalent to each other and then pick out who's the oddball that's not equivalent to the other two. So that becomes our challenge here. And it's a lot about just getting comfortable uh, being able to expand these series and, and so forth. So when I say expand, what I'm saying is we're going to substitute um, the beginning. You'll notice here on this one the low number is a 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a 1 in for all the ends. So it's 1 times 5 to the first all over 1 factorial, which uh, I think turns out to be a 5. Okay, so the first term's a 5. Um, let's see. What I could then do is I could, we're, gonna, we're starting with n equals 1, and we're going up in increments of 1 until we hit the high number of 15. So I'm going to test the second term. The second term would be 2 times 5 squared. Um, all over 2 factorial, so I ended up getting a 25 right there. And a lot of times you don't have to do much more work than that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go test these other ones and see um, who the first term is and see if we can create a match. So on this one, the low number says start with n equals 0. So I'm going to substitute a 0 in for all of the n's, and 0 plus 1 is 1 factorial. So you'll notice on the numerator I'm getting 0 times 1, which is just 0, and 0 divided by anything is 0. So what you'll notice is the first term in the second series is a 0, and which does not match the 5. So we instantly know right now that the first series and the second series are not equivalent to each other. Um, and I'm going to instantly jump to that third one now. Let's see, the very low number here says start with n equals 0. So I'm going to substitute a 0 in for all the n's. I got 1 times 5 to the first all over 1 factorial. And that turns out to be a 5, which is great because now it looks like the blue series, the first one, matches my third one, the orange one. One of the things I want to stress, though, is always check the last term, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go dot, 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 fast forward to that last term, and I'm going to plug in my high number, which is a 14. 14 plus 1 is 15 times 5 to the 15th power all over 15 factorial. Now, without even plugging that into my calculator, I'm going to instantly go back to my blue one up there, and I'm going to plug in the high number there, which was a 15, in for all of these ends right here. And that's going to give me 15 times... 5 to the 15th power all over 15 factorial, and yes, they do match. The last term in the blue series matches the last term in the orange series, and we've got a perfect match. So we'll say the first one's equivalent to the third one, and number two was the oddball. Here's a great example of what a Regents question will look like regarding um, series and sigma notation. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, because it's a multiple choice, I'm going to take a little different strategy than I would if it wasn't a multiple choice. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with number one here, and I'm going to start with his lowest number, which is a five, and I'm going to substitute it into the nth term expression here. If I substitute the 5, it's, well, it's just simply 5. Now, the next term, because we start with the lowest number and we go up in increments of 1, the next term would be a 6, and the next term would be a 7, and the next term would be an 8, yada, 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 until I got to the last term, which is at the top there, substitute it in and get 43. Now, does that match what was given? Not really, because my series has 6s and 8s and so forth, so I'm going to eliminate number 1 as a candidate right now. Going on to number two right here, I'm going to substitute a one, starting with a one here. Uh, start a, if I substitute a one, two times one plus three is giving me five. Uh, the next number I would substitute is a two, which two times two plus three would be a seven. Uh, the next number I substituted for n would be a three, and that would give me a nine. So we're looking good so far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to that very last term, which would be a 20. I'm going to substitute the 20 in for n. 2 times 20 is 40. 40 plus 3 is 43. I'll tell you what, I'm feeling really good about number 2 being a perfect match. Now, so I'm going to put a little smiley face there. And just to show you why the others don't work, let's go ahead here to number 3 and substitute a 4 in for n. Let's see, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. 
The next number I'd substitute is a 5. Let's see, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 3 is 7. So it's definitely looking good right now, definitely looking good. Let's fast forward all the way to that last term. Substitute a 24. Let's see, 2 times 24 is 48, 48 minus 3 is 45. So right there, everything looks so good early, but it was that last term that screwed it up. So we can successfully eliminate the 3. Okay, I think there's just as much to learn from the wrong answers as there is from the right answer sometimes. All right, here I'm going to substitute the 3. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 4 is 5. And then the next number, I'm going to substitute a 4 right there. 3 times 4 is 12, 12 minus 4 is 8. Ah, right there, that number does not match the second term up here. So there we're going to kill choice number 4. And then we can go back and celebrate. Yes, indeed, number 2 is the correct solution. Okay, well, our numbering's off here a little bit. We'll call this our third example of the night. And uh, again, another typical regions question. It says Jonathan's teacher required him to express the sum of these five terms using sigma notation. Jonathan proposed four possible answers. Which of these four answers is not correct? And again, we're just really uh, trying to emphasize here that there are multiple ways to represent these in sigma notation. And it all hinges on the fact of what do you start with? You know, the starting value really has a huge impact on what this nth term is going to look like. But for this first example, I'm going to substitute a 3 in for all the k's. And I ended up, let's see, 3 minus 1 on top, 3 on the bottom. Okay, this one's looking good. Now I'm going to go up in increments of 1. I'm going to substitute a 4, and that's going to give me 3 fourths plus, um, let's see, if I substituted a 5, I would get 4 fifths. So we're looking good. And now I'm going to fast forward to that last term. I'm going to substitute a 7. 7 minus 1 is 6, all over 7. So that one looks really good. I'm very happy with number 1. I'm going to put a little smiley face next to it. All right, let's try number two here. Okay, start with a one. Substitute the one, and I got one over two. Whoa, whoa, red flag right there. Red flag right there. Um, if I went up in increments of one, the next term would be two-thirds. And uh, let's see, dot, dot, dot. Fast forward to the last term. Substitute your five. I would get five over six. And what you'll notice is this doesn't match. First of all, the first term does not match the first term up here. The last term does not match the last term up here. So this one's a real dud. And just for fun here tonight, I want to confirm that the other two do indeed work. Real quickly here, uh, substitute a one. And 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, okay. Then substitute a 2 in for k, we get 3 fourths. And then let's fast forward to that last term. If I substituted a 5, I would get 6 over 7. And from the beginning to the end, that's a perfect match. We'll put our little happy face there where we like that term. And then number 4 here. Let's see, start with a 2. Substitute a 2 in there. Um, let's see, 2 all over 3. Okay, then I would substitute a 3 in for k and get 3 fourths. And then we'll cut to the chase. We'll fast forward. Last term, we want to substitute a 6. 6 over 7. Yes, from start to finish, that's a perfect match. We like that. So 3 out of the 4 were equivalent, and 1 was the one that did not match. Our fourth example is a little bit trickier. Um, now, part of the reason is they simplified that first term. Um, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and sort this out. See, if I start with number 1 right here, I'm going to substitute a 1 in for n, and that's going to give me radical 1, and then I'll substitute a 2, and then I'm going to substitute a 3. And this one's tempting to say that this is the equivalent expression, because the first term radical 1 really is a 1, and then you've got radical 2 matches, but right here, this is the oddball, okay? Radical 3 is not the same thing as the cubed root of 3, and so we could say number 1 is not equivalent because of the third term screwing it up. Let's try number 2 here. Let's substitute a 0, and that's going to be 0 to the 0 with power, and then we'll substitute a 1, and then we'll substitute a 2, and then we'll substitute a 3, and I'll tell you what, hopefully you can recognize that this one's not even close. First of all, it has four terms instead of three, um, and certainly, for instance, three to the third power is not the same thing as the cubed root of three, so we can kill number two instantly. All right, let's see, I'm going to go with orange. Let's try the third example. Start with a one. Uh, that's going to be one to the negative one plus two to the negative two plus three to the negative three. Now, this one may be tempting, um, but 
I want you to rewrite these as fractions. The first term is really 1 over 1. The second fraction is 1 over 2 squared. The third term is 1 over 3 cubed. And I, I, I hope you agree with me that 1 over 27 is not equivalent to the cubed root of 3. So we can successfully kill this choice. And it uh, looks like we're leaning towards number 4. We just want to confirm that this works. If you substitute a 1... Let's see, what would we get? We would get 1 raised to the 1 divided by 1 power, and then we'd substitute a 2, 2 divided by the 1 divided by 2 power, um, and then 3 raised to the 1 third power. And cool news here, if we use our groundhog rule, uh, well, first of all, 1 raised to any power is a 1, and then this would be radical 2, and then this would be the cube root of 3, and all we're using is our groundhog rule. This is a perfect match. We fell in love with choice 4, and uh, that's all there is to that one. Okay, now we can let the real fun begin. We're going to start to tackle the non-multiple choice version. And like I said, I'm going to take a different approach now that it's non-multiple choice. Uh, the first key that I want to ask you is, when you look at this particular sequence here, or the series, and I should use the word series instead of sequence because what we're doing is we're adding up those terms. And once you see plus signs, we should use the word series. Um, ask yourself, is this arithmetic or is it geometric? Okay, ask yourself if it's one of those two really special kinds. And what you'll notice is it looks like they're adding a fixed amount every time. So I'm going to say that this one is definitely arithmetic. And next thing I want you to do is to try to write the rule for the nth term. We could say the nth term, well generally speaking it's the first term plus the common difference times the quantity n minus 1. And we've got that memorized really well. So now we could say the nth term is really 7. That's the first term. Now the common difference is also a 7 because that's what we're adding to each term. And in this particular case, I think it's going to be easier today if we do clean these up. I got 7 and, well, that's it. The other 7's canceled out after I distributed and combined like terms. Now, the third step now is to create the sigma notation. You throw your nth term right in there. Now the thing that's missing is we got to decide what should the starting value be and what should the ending value be. So those are the questions. You know, what do I start with and what do I end with? All right. And this can be a little bit of trial and error. Like you don't necessarily have to get this right off the bat. But now remember, let's see if I can slide up just a little bit. Okay. For instance, what does n need to start with? Now, whatever you plug in for n has to produce the first term up here, which is a 7. So I think I'm going to substitute a 1 because 7 times 1 is, of course, 7. Now, the ending one sometimes is harder. We need to produce a 105. So what should we substitute into this n right here to produce a 105? Let's see. 7 times what? 7 times what? 7 times what? And of course, you could feel free to pick up your calculator, do a trial and error, 7 times you know, 12, 7 times you know, whatever. I think you're going to end up settling on 15. 7 times 15 would produce the 105, and now you've got a great answer in sigma notation. All right, last one of the night. We'll finish strong here, a little more challenging one, of course. Um, I want to express the sum of this particular series using sigma notation. And let's see, the first thing, think of it as a three-step process. Ask yourself, is this arithmetic? or is it geometric, okay? And what I think here is you'll notice we're not adding the same amount term by term, but we are multiplying by the same amount as we go along. So I'm gonna say that this one's geometric. The next thing I want you to do is to try to write the rule for the nth term. Uh, generically speaking, all geometrics follow this pattern right here. Again, we've got that well memorized by now. And let's see, let's see, the first term's a three. But my common ratio, the R value is the number that you keep multiplying by. I keep multiplying by negative 2 each time, and it's going to be raised to the n minus 1 power. There's no cleanup to do. You're not allowed to multiply the 3 and the negative 2 together because they have different exponents. And so my last step is to simply express this in sigma notation. And let's see. We got this, we got our 3, we got our negative 2 to the n minus 1. The only thing we're missing is, you know, what do we start with down here and what do we end with? So I'm going to say, um, let's see, n should start with blank. Now, whatever number you substitute in for n needs to produce a first term of 3. So I think it's usually like 0 or 1 or 2 typically. I did a little trial and error in my head and I ended up trying 1.
And here's what he got. You know, 3 times negative 2 to the 1 minus 1 power. Uh, let's see. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Yeah, I got 3. So that checks. It does produce the first term up here. I think the harder one's trying to figure out what we end with up here. Whatever you substitute for n has to produce 768. Again, trial and error. Start Just start plugging numbers in. Don't just stare at it and try to think of it in your head. That's going to get you nowhere. I think we need to just roll up our sleeves and start plugging numbers in. So after a few attempts, I ended up plugging in a 9. So let's see what we get here. Let's try 9 minus 1. Uh, that's negative 2 to the 8th. Now, negative 2 to the 8th power turned out to be... 256, a positive 256, and then when I multiplied it by 3, I certainly did get 768, so that meant 9 was a good number. We're going to take our sigma all the way up to 9, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is my final answer.